as teams have gotten used to in its first season playing in the movie center. It is loud and lit here in Austin, Texas. And in their road crimson uniforms, Oklahoma controls the opening tip. Sooners coming off maybe their best Big 12 win of the year against Kansas State. Texas had their most disappointing loss in league play last time out at Texas Tech. Here's Sherfield, 29 in red. Five on the shot clock. Good defense by Tyrese Hunter forces the air ball. And Dylan Mitchell, the freshman, comes up with it. Texas' starting lineup. Allen, Mitchell, DeSue, Carr. They've started every game this season. And Oklahoma, one of the very few teams in Power 5 conferences who starts not one but two freshmen, Chris. There's the veteran Tanner Groves, and he gets fouled with his first touch. You know, on one end, Oklahoma, a tough shot for Grant Sherfield. Not the way you want to start the game for him. And then a turnover over on the other end. Texas on the first play, going to the freshman Dylan Mitchell, try to get him involved early. Groves short on the three-pointer. Here's Marcus Carr, five and white with the ball. Texas still with a shot at a one seed in the NCAA tournament, but they still have five games to take care of business in the Big 12 regular season. There's Porter Moser, year number two in Norman, Oklahoma, coming off a successful 10 years at Loyola where he took the Ramblers to the Final Four in the Sweet 16. And now trying to rebuild that successful culture with the Sooners. Fans still on their feet here until the Longhorns nice score, and it's Tanner Groves with the first bucket of the game. A lot of pick and pop with him. It's nice to put him on the block, though. I think it kind of calms their offense down, takes a burden off of Sherfield with the dribble. Here's the double team, and the foul is going to be called on Oklahoma. That's the guy they've got to be able to play through a little bit on the block. Again, it can take some pressure off of Sherfield having to do everything. Not a great athlete. Sometimes I think it can bother him in this league, but a nice little use of the pivot foot and a shot fake by Groves. Before the shot, fouls on the freshman, Milos Yuzak. You know, it's interesting, Porter Moser, obviously your game plan against Texas, it's, it's got to start certainly with Marcus Carr and Timmy Allen. They're being very aggressive when Allen catches it on that mid post, coming over to double. Dylan DeSue, nice touch off the window for the first two. early whistles from this officiating crew Keith Kimball, Tony Padilla, Marcus Pettigrew and there is Rodney Terry. What a job he has done since he has been named interim head coach in the wake of Chris Beard being removed from this program. 13 and 5, 9 and 4 in the Big 12 and now most recently named as one of the finalists for the Naismith National Coach of the Year. Yeah, one of the 15 names put out. I'm a voter for that. I put him on my list. I think he's absolutely deserving of consideration for National Coach of the Year, and I think he should be front-runner for Big 12 Coach of the Year. Stolen away by Hunter. And that one blocked out of bounds by Owe. You know, tempo going to be a big deal today, Rich. Oklahoma, you cannot get into a track meet with Texas, and they've got to take care of the ball. Oklahoma, 24 turnovers is really what killed them in that loss at home to Kansas. And if this becomes a foul fest in a free throw shooting game, that's advantage Texas, one of the better free throw shooting teams in this conference. The best, statistically. Timmy Allen shot off to the right. Here comes the freshman Yuzan. Gives it up to Sherfield. That no middle defense working early for Texas, but the outside jump shot also working for Yuzan. My man Milos, he's starting to shoot the ball better, man. Six of 13 in their last three, and he only has 18 threes all season.
Hunter gets it to go from two-point range. Last time these teams met, it was the start of Big 12 play back on December 31st. And in Norman, Texas escaped with a one-point win, 70-69. to Here comes Allen up the right side. And another whistle stops play. Tell you what, this is as tight a start when it comes to officiating as maybe I've seen all year. This league is by far the most physical league in college basketball, and they have been on top of contact early in the go in the early going here. And now Tanner Groves goes to the bench. And Sam Godwin, 10 and Crimson, will take his place on the floor. Nice. Inside Bishop. And Christian Bishop has improved his play over the course of the last two weeks, but turned it over there. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed the game in the second half in that Kansas State win and it, on the road. And it wasn't just his numbers, it was his energy. Really good under out of bounds. You end up with a high low. He can struggle to finish at times, but his energy rich is what's contagious. Just plays so hard. Ortega only, oh, and that one swatted by Mitchell. Here's Carr. Too strong on the three. Sherfield the long rebound. Matt Sherfield currently fifth in the Big 12 in scoring. And the freshman makes a freshman mistake with the turnover. 15-59 to go. Here when the games are decided by five points or fewer or in overtime. And we've watched a lot of these games, Chris. A majority of them are in that category. Right now we have a one-point game, 15-45 to go. Carr guarded by the freshman, Yuzan. And he's off the mark. And Jacob Groves in for the first time, grabs the rebound. The defense by the freshman Uzan. That's that step back mid range shot that Marcus Carr loves, especially going to his left hand. He has been a stat sheet stuffer this year for the Longhorns. Certainly in the conversation for Big 12 Player of the Year. Jalen Hill almost turned it over. Godwin, Johnny on the spot, gets it to go. And that's found money for the Sooners. Hunter, too strong off the window, and Godwin the rebound. Skip pass, Groves off the mark. That's a shot they'll be looking for all afternoon. Well, he loves that corner. It was a great skip pass. Godwin again and a chance at a three-point play. Godwin shooting 68% from the field. He's very good around the basket. And a nice job playing in that, that little dunker spot there. Goes right to work. Really a good find for them. 6'10", has good length. I think... You know, it's not an athletic team, this this Oklahoma team. We were talking to Porter Moser about it yesterday. I think it's one of the reasons why they lost twice this year to Oklahoma State. I think it's one of the challenges here today because I think Texas and Oklahoma State are the two most athletic teams in this league. But Godwin gives them good size around the rim. The left-hander completes the three-point play, averaging five a game. He has five already in the first five and a half minutes of this contest kind of a similar start oklahoma had at home against kansas got off to a great start in that game and now a little foul trouble for rodney terry and the longhorns both their big men bishop and desu with two fouls and a lot of isolation in the half court for texas guys lining up and going one-on-one -on -one. a lot of dribbling and oklahoma playing a you know kind of a loaded up defense against the ball What's Texas best at offensively, Chris? They're, they're best when they're they're moving, especially those bigs when they can kind of because they don't really post up a lot except for Timmy Allen, as you see him here. Brock Cunningham with the ball gives it up to Allen. Allen can't get it to go, and Brock Cunningham tips it back, 
and they pay it off. It's a killer for Oklahoma because it was a really good first shot possession defensively. It's just a broken play regains possession for Texas there. And with that assist, Marcus Carr now has 700 career assists, one of just four active players to reach that mark. Carr looking for another dive. Hunter can't give it to him. Nice hustle play by Bijan Cortez, and that leaves Grant Sherfield all alone, his first two of the game. You know, Tyrese Hunter has not shot it well this year from three. And that shot, a long rebound that leads to the runout, and Hunter not back because he was the guy who took the shot. Hunter just six for his last 20 from the field in his last two games. Off to a slow start again today. Brock Cunningham making the hustle plays as he usually does, Chris. Well, it's a killer because here is a good first shot possession. The length by Godwin at the rim, and then Brock... Cunningham, like you said, Rich, that's that's what he does. You keep a possession alive and you end up getting a bucket. It's a winning play. And Brock announcing yesterday that he'll be coming back for one more year in Austin. An Austin product, one of just six Texas Longhorns from the Austin area to play in 100 or more career games in a Texas uniform. And he's a Brock star around here. They love him. You know, he's not rocking the mustache. <laughs> and I saw a sign in the in the crowd earlier. It said, Brock, bring back the stash. And I have to agree with the sentiment. Yeah. It was a much better look with the stash on Brock Cunningham. I'm, I'm buying what you're selling. He's like Wooderson, Matthew McConaughey's character in Dazed and Confused. He just keeps on coming back and hanging out with the young kids. There's Timmy Allen with his second bucket. And now some full court pressure by the Longhorns. And you take the ball out of Sherfield's hand. You know, you pick up before somebody else to initiate offense. Maybe a little surprising. Mm. Ten of the last 14 points for the Oklahoma Sooners scored in the painted area. How about the start for Milo Suzan? Scoring the ball. A couple nice passes. Starting to really figure it out, the freshman. Yeah, Yuzan with five, and it's a six-point Oklahoma lead. There's Brock Cunningham with the three, and that is one of the areas he's really improved upon. It is, and he had a couple big ones at the end of Texas Tech that did not go in, but he has shot it well from three. 43% this year for Cunningham from beyond the arc. One and done for the Sooners. And Texas tied up with a triple. Here's the freshman, Arterio Morris. Cunningham, this time from two-point range. <laughs> nice extra pass, really Sherfield nice. to Owe for his first two. Freshman making his fourth consecutive start this season. Here's Cunningham. Heat check three by Brock Cunningham. The Horns are four of their last five. Cunningham almost makes the steal. There's Yuzan guarded by Rice. Five on the shot clock. Sherfield, Rice with the steal, and we'll have to check and see if that's going to be an intentional foul on Grant Sherfield. Something tells me it'll come back for Brock. Maybe sooner than later. Jabari Rice at the line. You know, it was interesting with Brock Cunningham after the Texas Tech game. He went one of five from three, and he did miss some big ones down the stretch. In the post game, or it may have been the interview the other day he was doing, he referenced Steph Curry going 0 for 13. <laughs> and he said, look, it happens to the best of them. I said, that's a tad aggressive throwing yourself in that category, yeah. but I get the point. Well, he stopped a little short. He didn't say the best of us, at least. 
What do you call that? Irrational confidence? confidence? Absolutely. It's one of my favorites. Here's Groves. Trapped. Almost turned it over. Now the freshman Owe gives it up to his fellow freshman, Yuzan. Texas with an 18-16 lead. Ten and a half to go in the first half. And for the rest of this season, these Sooners are in desperation mode. They have four quad one games in their final five contests, and they might need every one of them if they want to make the tournament. Deep three with the shot clock running down. No good. You know, when you have Otega Owe, who has only attempted one three all year, and Joe Bamisil, who's one of eight from three in conference play, you've got two non-shooters out there. And Texas really helping off of those guys. It clogs things up. And so Porter Moser countering by taking Bamisil off. Halfway done with the first half. Texas looking to become the first team to 10 wins in the lead. Jalen Hill, that one is blocked, but they're going to count the basket. So Jalen Hill has his first bucket of the game. He had 14 the last time these two teams got together in Norman. No Marcus Carr on the floor. No Timmy Allen on the floor for Rodney Terry and the Horns. Cunningham had it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Texas basketball. But Jabari Rice is on the floor. Haven't talked about him much yet, but he's been terrific for them in the last couple of weeks. He's been as good a find out of the portal as any team has had, and he's not even a starter. Now, he plays like a starter. He plays starters minutes. What a find. And he's only gotten better. I mean, his improvement, even over the last handful of games. There's that patented shot fake, and he turns it into a chance at a three-point play. This is his move. This is his patented move, and he comes up on his toes in order to make it. And it's just, it's a real sales job. And no matter, Porter Moser yesterday saying they threatened to take our players' meal money away if they <laughs> went for the shot fake. But look at the improvement. I mean, he's just gotten better and better offensively, more confident. And he's a real competitor. I and mean, that's the other thing with him. He just, what a tough dude. And Chris... Got to spend some court time with Jabari Rice. We'll show you a little bit of that coming up at halftime. Don't go anywhere. Don't turn off your phones. Don't turn off your iPads. Make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi signal. There's Bamisil with his first bucket. Close game throughout the first 11 minutes of this Big 12 contest. Texas a one-point lead with the ball. Here's Cunningham. Trapped and ball. stolen away by Bamisil. The float game in transition, no good. Weak side rebound to Morris. Bamisil went Debo. That's my chain and my bike <laughs> on that double team. Another three, Cunningham. Almost got the shooter's touch on that one. Now Yuzan, freshman on freshman. Groves wants it. Dylan Mitchell stole it away. Bryce short on the three. And that foul is going to go on Brock Cunningham. And it will be Oklahoma basketball. Good. That shot early by Rice. And yeah, it's certainly a foul. And it's interesting with Dylan DeSue, two fouls, Christian Bishop with two fouls, Brock Cunningham getting some extended run there on the interior. And now you mentioned DeSue, he's back on the floor for the first time in about eight minutes. Number one in white with two fouls. That's the other thing with Texas Rich. They've had the most productive bench in the Big 12 in terms of scoring output. You know, it's a deep team. One of the reasons they have nine quad one wins this year. That's tied for second most in the nation, trailing only the Kansas Jayhawks. Of 
of course, Kansas and Baylor coming up in a couple hours from Lawrence on ESPN. Those three teams, Texas, Kansas, Baylor, all tied atop the Big 12 standings at 9-4. and four. Yuzan. And one. Inside this gym. Yuzan completes the three-point play. He has eight points. And it's a two-point Oklahoma lead, 23-21. We talked about Oklahoma needing balance. They, that's what they've gotten so far in this first half. Really good balance. It hasn't been, all been on the shoulders of Grant Sherfield. Six players have scored. Sherfield only two points. Here's Timmy Allen back on the floor. With 10 on the shot clock. Allen. And with two guys on him. Yeah, Timmy Allen has seen teams loaded up on him for two straight seasons now, especially when he catches him at mid post. Allen has six. You know, they don't throw it to him on the block. They let him operate here in what we call the mid post. And as soon as this thing goes on the ground, here comes Godwin. He's a little bit tentative. But regardless, Timmy Allen has seen that now for two years. He's become very efficient making plays from that mid post. Averaging about 12 and 5 in Big 12 play. It's like he can roll out of bed and average that each and every game. Here's DeSue jumping. And Timmy Allen also second on their team in assists. So really a willing passer out of there as well if you move to open space. Texas has made seven of the last nine from the field. And they're up by two. Using a lot of dribbling. And an empty possession for the Sooners. Here comes Hunter in transition. All the way to the cup. And it rolls off. Rebound to Godwin. Cortez kicks it out. Sherfield tried the shot fake on the king of the shot fake. Loose ball. Wow. What to sue on the floor. And it's going to stay Oklahoma basketball despite the excellent effort from Dylan to You know, sometimes you're hoping a guy will do the right thing. And this is what Dylan to does. He's always in motion. Mm. I think he was going for the no splash there. I think the artistic integrity on the dive is what he was protecting. He almost missed the ball entirely, but what a play. And now he goes to the sidelines. Sacrificing the body. Texas is swimming and diving team number two in the country. They were honored earlier during the timeout. They might be taking a look at the suit. That's a jump ball. will be possession arrow to the Longhorns. They have a two-point lead, 5.52 to go. A win gives them 10 in the conference. They'll be the first to 10. And later today, they'll be joined by either Baylor or Tech or Kansas, who are playing each other at Allen Fieldhouse in a couple hours. Joe Lenardi says a one seed in the NCAA tournament is still in their scopes. Rock Cunningham thought about it. Goes behind the back and gets it back. Ten on the shot clock for the Horns. Offensive rebound. Brock Cunningham gets it back out to Carr. Carr hangs and hits. First two of the game for Marcus Carr. That's another possession where Brock Cunningham's hustle gets your team a basket. We've seen it a couple times already this afternoon. Four-point Texas lead. Good hands by Carr on the defensive end. You know, nobody knows their role better than Brock Cunningham. And he has become a better scorer of the ball, but this is what his value is. Extra plays, extra effort. And when you have a team of guys who are going to make plays like that, 
And then you got guys like Marcus Carr to finish it off. Brock Cunningham has almost as many offensive rebounds this season as he does defensive rebounds. Sherfield, quick trigger with the deep three. And Allen comes away with it for Texas. Broke some ankles, but didn't get the bucket. Nice outlet from Groves to Bamisil. And that's twice now. Transition defense, Texas. Nobody getting back. Bad defensive balance leading to a layup. Rice, that shot fake again. Hunter. Bamisil dials it up and knocks down the triple. Out of the timeout, some full court pressure, just token to slow things down. Here's Allen, he has six. Hunter pulls up and knocks it down. Get a little action out of the timeout. And that is not an easy shot. Yeah, it's a tough little floater there from where Tyrese Hunter took that. Sherfield. Now Groves, one-on-one -on -one against Cunningham. And a traveling violation call. Rob Cunningham wins that battle. Make sure you stay tuned in three minutes and 18 seconds. The halftime report comes up. We'll preview number nine, Baylor, number five, Kansas. We'll talk about the art of the shot fake. Chris Catola with Jabari Rice and first half stats and analysis coming your way at halftime. Three minutes to go. Oh, yeah, missed missed him. Ooh, Rice, another shot fake. Allen. Cunningham kept it alive, but Tanner Groves grabs it for the Sooners. Oklahoma down one. This game has been played in a small window. Sherfield weaves his way in for two. It's a really nice drive, but if you're Texas, he cannot get from where he started all the way to the rim like that. That is too easy. Grant Sherfield only four points, and Oklahoma is up by one. Look at Cunningham with the hustle again. And the putback. Double digits for the Brockstar. Now, Texas in line for the top seed in that tournament. The top four get a bye into the quarterfinals. Oklahoma in the bottom half of that. They would have to play on Wednesday if things hold. Two minutes to go in the first half. Ripped away by Allen. Texas looking to add to a one-point lead. Soft touch, Marcus Carr, second bucket of the game. He's very good in the mid-range. Shoots a high percentage from there, and he prefers it. You know, he probably could have pressed the action at the rim, decides to pull up. Sherfield can't get it to go. Carr out on the break. Blows right by the freshman, Yuzan. But Oklahoma comes away with it. Sherfield, nice bounce pass to Yuzan at the other end. And again, transition defense. Dylan DeSue's got to run back to the front of the rim. He commits, and that allows Yuzan to get right behind him. The freshman, Milos Yuzan, with 10 for the Sooners. And we count down to one minute to go in what has been a closely contested first half. Allen, three to shoot, deep three by Carr. And the foul's going to be called on Bamison. It's an unnecessary foul. And this has been a real problem in the first half for, for Texas. Transition defense, Dylan DeSue, you don't really see it there, but he commits, he comes up, he's the last guy back. That last guy back has to play at the front of the rim. And then you kind of, that DeSue ends up playing two. A problem in this first half and eight fast break points for Oklahoma. 
Marcus Carr will shoot three free throws. He's the best free throw shooter on this team. And with 2,100 plus points coming up on 2,200 points, he's eighth among active scoring leaders in Division I college basketball. You know, he's back to being the Marcus Carr who he's been all season. And particularly in the last three games. I think the three games prior took a bit of a dip. But he is starting to play really, really well. Again. Carr's two free throws gives Texas a two-point lead. 40 seconds to go in an entertaining first half. Yuzan picked off, but right into the hands of Sherfield. A lot of broken plays being turned into baskets, and again, Oklahoma really killing Texas in the paint. 24 paint points for the Oklahoma Sooners. Shot clock is off. 10 to go in the half. Cunningham is going to have to get it up. He does. And it just falls off. And both teams will go to the line. Grant Sherfield is quiet. That's yeah. the other thing. If you're Porter Mosier, you got to feel really good. You had nice balance offensively. Yeah, only six for Sherfield, the leading scorer for these Sooners. Cunningham will come off the bench as he usually does for the Texas Longhorns in the second half. And immediately Oklahoma starts with a turnover. That's one of the tent poles of a Porter Moser coach team is low turnovers. And that's the ninth today for the Sooners. You know, it's interesting. You look over at Texas's bench and Brock Cunningham just coming out to the bench from halftime. He, had, he was not on the bench to start the half. He's taking a seat now. Saw him out there in warm-ups. Didn't look like anything was wrong. Could have been a potty break. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Might have gotten too worked up in that first half. The suit. Got it. Dylan DeSue playing in his 101st career game. Six players on this Texas roster over the century mark in games played. Good first half for 12 in Crimson. Milos Uzan. Groves trying to muscle his way to the hoop. Five on the shot clock. Uzan with the shot fake short. And a foul call. Foul goes on zero and white, Timmy Allen. They're calling it tight today. I mean, he does chuck them a little bit in the chest. You gotta be looking for that though. Here's Groves. He can knock that down, not that top. Texas two-point lead with the ball. Hunter had his pass picked off. Up ahead. Ooh. And a great defensive effort by Dylan DeSue as bodies go flying. Ooh. Another fast break opportunity. And how about the freshman that Porter Moser said is a freshman but with a Big 12 body. And now DeSue slow to get up. I mean, it's a good basketball play on both sides. First of all, mm -hmm. how about the take? This is how you go to the rim by Otega Owe. And then that's a really good challenge by DeSue. And both those guys came down hard. That is a confrontation at the rim. Yeah, Dylan DeSue took the worst of it as freshman Otega Owe goes to the line. 20 minutes a game in his last four. He started the last three games coming in. First trip to the free throw line this afternoon. And he makes good on his first free throw. You know, Porter Moser's gone in the direction of freshmen. 
You know, it takes Jacob Groves out of the starting lineup, puts Otega Owe in. They've been starting Milo Suzanne. And they're going to be talented at time, but it's a hard league to play in when you're starting two freshmen. No doubt. Four points for Owe. Built like a linebacker. His brother is a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. Catch and release, Timmy Allen. He is so good on that. Just flashing to the foul line, and he kind of curls himself into it to begin his shooting angle. So efficient. Owe gets his own miss. Twice, three times for number three. What an effort by Otega Owe. Tied again at 38. Five on the shot clock. Step back. Now Marcus Carr heaves one up off the window. And it's a shot clock violation. Good defensive stand by the Sooners. A lot of isolation for Texas. A lot of, you know, an individual trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of dribbling. Not nearly the cutting and the, the movement off the ball that we're used to with Texas. And just to give you an update on Brock Cunningham, everything's fine. He's back on the floor for the Horns. Sherfield lost the handle, drew the foul. And that's Marcus Carr's first personal foul of the game. Brock led all scorers with 10 in the first half. And in his last eight games, He's making a habit of getting into double digits. Carr's got a rebound. And the foul is going to go on Tanner Groves, his second. So already we've had seven ties, Chris, and seven lead changes. Nothing new in the Big 12. You know, earlier in the game, you were talking about how Marcus Carr is playing good again. What do you think the biggest difference has been for him and his improved play? Well, I think for a lot of guys, you know, Marquise Noel, I would throw into this category. You go through the second time of the league, teams are going to defend you differently, particularly if you're a guy that they need to take out of the game. And so I think Marcus Carr was adjusting to that for a three-game span there. But he is, you know, even in the loss of Texas Tech, he was good the other day. He's not a guy you can keep down for long. Yeah, over 50% from the field in his last three games coming in. Here's Owe. Little set shot doesn't go. And here comes Timmy Allen leading the charge. Trying to thread the needle to the big man Bishop. And a foul's drawn on Oklahoma. That's Jalen Hills first. If Texas, Texas can hang on and win, they'll improve to 10 and 4, and at least for the mom, moment have sole possession of first place. And Keith Kimball. Basketball, okay. Nice. Allen, great patience from Timmy Allen, and right out of the timeout, he has a chance at a three point play. They ran through that three times last night at their practice. And through that exercise, they were talking about how Oklahoma's not going to switch this. And when you don't switch it, it's very hard to cover the front of the rim. Like, I, I think Sam Godwin's got to, you know, I think ultimately you have to switch that. But a nice execution and a, and a good game plan for Rodney Terry. Allen misses the first. Chance to complete the three-point play. 10 for Allen, four-point lead for the Horns. Godwin, left hand, strong off the window from Sam Godwin. 
Here's Bishop. And he gets it to go. First two of the game for the big man. Really nice adjustment to put it on the floor. Felt the defense coming over. Tyrese Hunter on the other side of the floor, staying glued to Grant Sherfield. Texas has a breakaway. And Cunningham couldn't handle that laser from Timmy Allen. Sherfield for three. His first triple of the afternoon, Grant Sherfield has nine. And I think the defense got lazy. They've done a nice job on Grant Sherfield. I believe Tyrese Hunter went under that screen. First real clean look Sherfield's had all day. One for three from distance today. He was one for seven from three when they met the first time. Bishop working hard on Godwin, but Godwin wins that battle. For the lead, Sherfield back-to-back -back triples. And that's the second. Even though it's going to be between the 7, 8, 9, and 10 seeds, those are going to be some terrific games right now. TCU up big on Oklahoma State. Mike Miles back in action for the Horned Frogs. That's big news for them. Big news for our crew as well. I checked in with our super producer, Scott Gustafson. The reservation at Q39 locked in. Most importantly. That's right. Eat well to play well. Get your priorities straight when you head to the barbecue capital of the country. We have a timeout on the floor. Oklahoma coming off arguably their biggest win in Big 12 play. A win against a ranked Kansas State team. But this would certainly trump that. Beating number six Texas on the road. That's a super quad one win. A lot of time to go though. Eight on the shot clock for the Horns. Here's Carr. And Brock Cunningham, another offensive rebound. Dessou back on the floor. Rice with the shot fake. Ten to shoot. Here's number ten. Gives it up. Dessou. And Dylan Dessou will go to the line for the first time today. It's a really nice feed and a really nice cut by Dylan Dessou. You know, nobody underneath. And it's a tough action to defend because there's really no help assigned because that ball's in the middle third. And, and for, you know, Texas, once again, you're going to get points here off of Brock Cunningham saving the possession. It was an offensive rebound that leads to these two free throws. Dessou, 75% from the line, misses the first. Brock Cunningham has four offensive rebounds, and he's telling Jalen Hill all about it. One for two for Dessou. And now Oklahoma brings the ball up, nursing a one-point lead, coming up on 14 to go. Sherfield. And a foul on the floor as Sherfield goes down, and so does Jabari Rice. You know, Milo Suzanne doing a lot of the initiating the offense now, taking Sherfield off the ball. Those are the shots you've got to get away from, though, if you're Sherfield. Those are the ones that hurt you. It's early in the possession. He's driving into a crowded paint and just throwing up a prayer. So Yuzan goes to the bench, 10 points in the first half. And already Texas shooting one and one in the bonus with about 14 minutes to go. And Rice gets the front end. And we're talking to Porter Moser about Sherfield and the balance you play between wanting him to be aggressive and having to carry a lot of your scoring load versus taking shots that don't hurt your team and, and certainly don't hurt your defense. Throws the rebound. So we are tied now for the eighth time this afternoon. Here's Bijan Cortez, 14 in crimson. Bamisil got bumped by Brock. And Joe Bamisil will go to the line.
Already a major free throw differential in this one, Chris. Oklahoma's made all of them, but they've only shot four of them. Texas, eight for 13. And now five for five for the Sooners as a team. One for two for Bamisil. It's a one point Oklahoma lead. Oklahoma not currently in consideration for the field of 68, according to Joe Lenardi, our resident bracketologist. A win today would change that. Five on the shot clock. Carr pulls up. Baseline J, Marcus Carr. And a nice job by DeSue, kind of sticking his rear end out, which acted as a screener to create the space for Carr. Five to shoot. Open three. Hill. Yes, sir. Jalen Hill for three. And it feels like Oklahoma has really been able to take this crowd out of the game with shots like that, answer shots. And that ball out of bounds along the baseline. It's a Texas turnover. This crowd wanted something to get going about, and the shot clock winding down, a good cross court pass. The guy in Jalen Hill is certainly capable. Hasn't shot a great percentage of three, but we know he can get it going scoring. Turnovers are flying the ointment in this half so far for the Texas Longhorns. Five of them in this second half. Bamisil, are you kidding me? Joe Bamisil with just his sixth triple of the season. And a five-point Oklahoma lead feels like 15 in this game. Backdoor cut. Rice. Yes, sir. And Tanner Groves is down. Grant Sherfield has two threes in the second half. He has 12. And the freshman, Milos Yuzan, with 10. Groves back out there, setting a strong pick and getting it back. Now Hill, mid post. Left hand. And the foul's going to go on Timmy Allen in second. He made a point about the free throw disparity. Oklahoma's starting to close the gap on that. And they're, they're really spreading Texas out. I mean, Jalen Hill's got one-on-one, -on -one and he's, he's got such a big body. I mean, Porter Moser puts him all over the floor. 230 pounds. At 6'6. Six, six. Off the mark on that one. The reporter Moser telling us yesterday Jalen Hill is, is the best defender he's had. And he also mentioned, you brought this up earlier, there's only been a couple of games where he, Jalen Hill, Grant Sherfield and Tanner Gross have all played to the best of their abilities. Against Alabama, they blew them out. And last time out against Kansas State, and they got a win as well. DeSue turned it over. Good transition defense by the Horns, and a two-hand block from Dylan Mitchell. DeSue, the big man, short on the three ball. Here's Allen with the offensive board. You love the patience of Timmy Allen, but he can't pay it off on that time. Cortez can't get to it in time. That's an unforced error. How about that, though? Timmy Allen, the miss on one end, but a nice job contesting, just making it hard to catch. And you force a turnover. Or 
This Oklahoma team, according to the analytics, Ken Pomeroy has them as the number nine team overall, 12th offensively in efficiency, but they're pretty good on the defensive end as well. Tyrese Hunter running the show now for the Horns. DeSue, aggressive on the offensive end. No touch from Marcus Carr. You'd love to get him going a little bit here. And speaking of getting going, Grant Sherfield with the third three of the second half. And two of those threes came in transition, where he's able to find some open space. And Tony Padilla says no shot, foul on the floor, but Oklahoma has its largest lead of the game, Chris. Yeah, two of his threes have come in the open floor, and you're just losing him. Like, somebody's got to know where Grant Sherfield is. And if you're Tyrese Hunter, you got to get a hand up. you got to give at least a contest there. A nice job by Sherfield. He has been blanketed in the half court for the most part. Seven times over 20 points a game in, in a game this season. He had 22, eight rebounds and six assists in that upset win against Kansas State earlier this week. And he's now got 15 in this one. Tell you the fast break has been huge for Oklahoma's offense today. Car two for two. He has a dozen. And now Oklahoma with the ball and a five-point lead. Under 10 minutes to go in the game. Hill, look at that effort by DeSue. Groves gets it back and gets it to go. Another broken play that Oklahoma takes advantage of. I mean, what a hustle from DeSue to not come up with that is deflating. Seven-point Oklahoma lead. They led by seven the first time these two teams met, and Texas came back and won it by one. There's Jabari Rice with his second field goal of the second half. He's in double digits. And now Rice and Sherfield are getting to know one another. Shot fake Groves. Step through, buckets. Most teams switch that pick and pop with Tanner Groves. Texas not doing that. And it's the closeout to Groves that allowed the drive. Two straight buckets for him. Here's that scramble. And Dylan DeSue, you think he's got it? Nice job by Jalen Hill keeping the play alive. Good finish there, and then Texas not electing to switch. It's a bad closeout by Dylan DeSue. Leads to the drive there by Groves. Groves with just six points, but he's been a big part of this second half comeback. Five rebounds to go along with those six points. Texas in the double bonus already, shooting two free throws on every subsequent Sooners foul. And Carr nails them both. Thirteen for Carr. The crowd trying to get back in it. Rice trying to stay glued to Sherfield. Tanner Groves. And he is a man on a mission. That's the first pass personal foul on Jabari Rice. As Tanner Groves will go to the line for the first time today. Foul line's been a big part of this second half. Groves gets the first. Right now, Oklahoma 7 for 9 as a team from the free throw line. Make it 8 for 10. Let's 
So the lead remains seven for the Oklahoma Sooners. Double-digit underdogs coming into this game in Austin. Carr, tough two, drew the foul on Tanner Groves. And that's number four on big number 35. Yeah, and it's a close, that's a close one. I, I thought he had good position, Tanner Groves. Porter Moser was not happy with the call. And they end up switching it. And Carr's tough to defend because he's shifty, uses that shot fake. Yeah, I could be wrong. He gets into his space a little bit there. And with four fouls, it's not a smart play. Eight minutes left if you're Porter Moser, do you arrest him? I think you have to take him out, certainly. And no sooner do you say that than Tanner Groves goes to the bench in favor of Sam Godwin checking in. And it's a big play because he was starting to get a little momentum offensively, Groves was. Starting to become a problem for Texas's defense. I expect we won't see him till around that four-minute TV timeout. Marcus Carr, two for two. Spending a lot of time at the free-throw stripe in this second half is Marcus Carr. He's got 15. That's tied for game-high honors with Grant Sheffield, the two top scorers on these teams. Now full-court pressure by the Longhorns. Well, they've pressured all game, and in, in part to, to really, I think, get into the legs of these guards, particularly the freshman Uzan who's handled it all game. Here's Sherfield with the ball. Nine points in this second half, all from beyond the arc. This time it's a two, and he can't get it to go. Here's Rice. And now they have a lead on number six, Texas. A Texas win gives them 10 wins in the lead. And they get the ball. Brock Cunningham again. Allen to Bishop. Great job by Godwin. Five to shoot. Seven left in the game. Rice doesn't realize it. He got it off, but it was partially blocked, and that's a shot clock violation. What a defensive possession for Oklahoma coming out of the timeout. Started with the wall up by Godwin. And the ball seems to be getting stuck a little on offense for Texas. It has all game. Yeah. It has all game. A lot of isolation and credit Oklahoma. They have defended the ball today very well. 2.0 OU lead. The freshman Yuzan with the ball. Guarded by the super senior car. Two to shoot. Hill from the other corner. And there's a foul on the floor, says Tony Padilla. And that's going to be on Texas. And Oklahoma shooting free throws. We've had a lot of off-ball fouls today. And yeah, that's a silly play by Christian Bishop. You have numbers underneath. To do that is, is just and foolish. And that's four fouls on 32 and white Christian Bishop. To the bench he goes. Sam Godwin to the line. 54% free throw shooter. But the left-hander calmly knocks the first one down. Sam Godwin only has one double-digit scoring game in Big 12 play. That came against the Kansas Jayhawks. He has nine this afternoon. That's a big foul. I mean, you, you had to stop, and then you allow two cheap free throws in a game like this. Dessou lost the handle. Here's Bamisil, open court. Tied up by Cunningham, and a whistle blows. And that 
it's going to be a foul on Brock Cunningham, his third. That's close. Really I think close. that's a good defensive play. Yeah. You know, it has not been a good night for Dylan DeSue. You know, I think the foul trouble kind of took him out of rhythm in the first half. And, you know, that last turnover, he's just got to catch the ball. I mean, he just possessed the ball. And he's kind of been frantic and had a tough night for DeSue. Joe Bamisil at the line, hit the first. And now we'll get a chance at a second. He has a dozen. Surprise scoring from Joe Bamisil, who averages three and a half points a game. And with those free throws, he has a Baker's dozen this afternoon. Here's Allen. Working on Hill. Timmy Allen hangs and hits. He wasn't going to be denied. He took that personally. And remember, Porter Moser calls Jalen Hill the best defender he's had. And Hill's thick. And Timmy Allen was not going to be denied. He kept it in that right hand. And that's a tough finish. Really good touch off the glass. And when his team needed a big score, Timmy Allen gives it to you. The fouls starting to negate each other. All the big men on both teams are in foul trouble. That's 13 for Timmy Allen. And the Oklahoma lead has been sliced to three. Famicil, aggressive. And he traveled, slipped on the court. And that's an Oklahoma turnover. Number 13 for the Sooners. You know, I understand for, if you're Grant Sherfield that they are face guarding you. Jabari Rice is face guarding essentially Sherfield. I think you still got to try to be involved here. Like you're there, you've been the guy. Don't take yourself out of the play. A three pointer will tie it up for the Longhorns. Here is that three. The ninth tie of the game. Ball's on the floor. Texas comes away with it. Deep three. Rice back to back triples. A break point, and this is a big possession for Oklahoma. 4:51 to go. Groves on the floor with the four fouls, and almost another turnover caused by the Texas defense. And that five on the floor, they are fired up. Sooners, no field goals in over four minutes. They led by as many as seven. Now they find themselves down three. John Cortez will handle the ball handling duties. Here's Sherfield with the ball. As Chris mentioned, Jabari Rice sticking to him. Five to shoot. Sherfield's got it. 30 footer. Air ball. And frustration etched on the face of Grant Sherfield. Now Marcus Carr will walk it up with 4.15 to go. Groves 
on the high hedge. Carr gives it up to Sue, left open. A fight for the loose ball. And it's going to be Oklahoma basketball scoreless in the second half. Not anymore. Oklahoma 13 for 15 from the free throw line. That one's off. And DeSue has the rebound. Horns with the ball and the two-point lead. Rice, shot fake. Five on the clock. Now Rice drives. Pulls up, baseline. 21 for Jabari Rice. Competitor, winner. And Rice still face guarding Grant Sherfield. Sherfield gets it. And he's frustrated, Sherfield. I'll tell you what, I love this dude, Jabari Rice. I mean, I'm going to start gushing here. This is a foxhole dude. When bullets start flying, this is your guy. He's a fighter, and he's hit some clutch shots all year. He has taken back this game. His two threes, and then shots like that at the end of the clock. And what a job he has done defensively as well. How about 16 second half points for Jabari Rice, the grad student out of Houston? Allen, nowhere to go. Five to shoot. Cunningham. Foul on the floor as to Sue. To Sue touches the front rim, the back rim, and then off. That one drops. A 12 1 Texas run. Has put them up five, two and a half to go. Looking for win number ten in league play. Well, this defense of, of Texas has stepped up. And, you know, this crowd obviously gives your defense energy. When they took the lead, this crowd got back into the game. Here's Sherfield fighting just to get the ball in his hands. Now he goes up strong against the Texas defense, but comes up empty. That's the activity of Dylan DeSue. He covers up a lot of things. Nice challenge there without fouling. Now time is on the side of these Texas Longhorns. Under two minutes to go. Carr for three. DeSue the offensive board. Good decision. Five on the clock. Cunningham shovels it to Allen. Tough two off the mark. Hill rebounds for Oklahoma. Seven minutes without a field goal for the Sooners. And bodies flying again. It's a good call. And these are two big free throws. Yeah, I, th I think Jalen Hill beats him there. I, I think that's a good call. And I, I think Timmy Allen, you don't kind of see it from there. He was sliding backwards. Two big free throws here, though. 126 to go. Oklahoma, one timeout remaining. Texas has two. Possession arrow in favor of the Longhorns. Both teams in the double bonus. Shooting two free throws on every subsequent foul. And that's where Jalen Hill finds himself five points this afternoon
Hill gets the first. In and out. Big rebound by DeSue. This has got to go Timmy Allen. That little drop where they throw, just drop it down to him in the mid post and let him create something. There it is. Allen gets the touch. And a five second call on Timmy Allen. Oklahoma's defense rises up. Sherfield found a little breathing room, gave it up. Yuzan for three. Offensive rebound. Godwin gets fouled and will go to the line. These shot fakes have Texas scrambling. A nice job by Godwin on the offensive glass. That's the fourth on Dylan DeSue. Now Godwin at the line, shooting two. Mm. Everyone so valuable. 14 for 19 now as a team for the Sooners. One for two for Godwin. Got to be solid defensively if you're Oklahoma here. No foul? Absolutely not. Carr. That would have been huge, but he comes up empty. And Owe brings it up. Cross is over to the glass. Oh. Rebound. Godwin, no. Fight for the ball. Oklahoma comes away with it. Ten seconds to go. Sherfield. Huge bucket. Grant Sherfield ties it up at 73 with 6.7. Last shot time for the Longhorns. Wow. And we are going to overtime in Austin. Wow. Neither. Now they'll jump it up. And Oklahoma controls. This would be the biggest win of the year for Oklahoma in the Big 12. Hill. Little push shot. shot gets it to go. The first basket in overtime is such a big basket. That was a tough shot. Here's Carr. Dessou. A push shot of his own. Remember, no Tanner Groves in this overtime. He fouled out. Sherfield, who tied the game up with that three. And Owe blocks, and it'll be Texas basketball. Yeah, he's a non-shooter, and, and for that to be, you know, they're doubling, obviously, Sherfield off of that crossing action. You get the skip you want, but because he's a non-shooter, he's got to drive that basketball, and it's going to be a tough play over the Big 12's third best shot blocker. Another nail biter in the best conference in basketball. And DeSue again. The second what. bucket of the overtime. Most of this game's been a struggle, but Dylan DeSue has been fantastic. Last five minutes of regulation and so far. Stolen away. Allen to call. He has the ball now. 25 in crimson.
A win in Texas all alone in first place in the Big 12. Taken away by Cunningham. Timmy Allen, two big steps and one big bucket. Obviously, it's a fantastic finish, but it's the outlet pass. Another turnover. And how about this pass from Jabari Rice? That's the play that sets this up. And then you have an artistic finish by Timmy Allen. Another possession stolen by Brock Cunningham. A good look ahead by Rice. And then you allow the offensive talent in Allen to go to work. Timmy Allen averaging over 12 a game in Big 12 play. Has 15 this afternoon. The big miss would have made it a three possession game. Instead, it's a six point Texas lead. 2.50 to go in OT. Yuzan! Clutch from the freshman. Now things quiet down, if only for a moment here in the Moody Center. Rice had the airspace. 24 for Jabari Rice matches his season high. Sherfield can't answer with a three of his own. Here's Carr, the blow by. Ooh. And it rolls off. What a bad foul. You know, they have run this play for Jabari Rice a lot in this second half. He knew he was going to shoot this before he even caught it. He is not great shooting on the move, but he's really good with his feet set, and he's become much more accurate. It's been a good go-to play, and what a bad foul by Brock Cunningham. Not only is it his fifth, but you allow Oklahoma to go 94 feet to take two cheap three shots. And he has been a major energy giver to this Longhorns team. Ten points, four rebounds, four assists, but now five fouls for Cunningham. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jalen Hill's got inside position, and I know it's your M.O. to play hard and go for the extra play, but you got to live to fight another day. Hill knocks down the free throw. He had the first bucket of overtime. Now he has a free throw. Ten points for Jalen Hill. Calmly knocks that one down as well. And Oklahoma has used their free throw shooting to the best of their advantage to get back in this game. 17 for 22 on the game for the Sooners from the strike. Here's Hunter. Now Rice up the left side. We have been seeing Tyrese Hunter in this second half, but with Brock Cunningham out, Ronnie Terry going with ball handling against that Oklahoma pressure. Now they double. Marcus Carr get the ball out of his hands. Rice with that shot fake. Off the window, no. Loose ball. Who wants it? Carr gets on the floor first. And it's a jump ball possession arrow to Texas. Could be a game-saving hustle play there by Marcus Carr. First team all Big 12, and you don't think this dude wants to win? This is what we mean when we call somebody a competitor. They have the possession arrow. Marcus Carr knows that, and he knows he's just got to be involved in that scrum, and they're going to end up with the basketball in 20 seconds on the shot clock. Marcus Carr got in the best shape of his life this offseason. Gave up red meat and pasta, something I could never do. And the numbers prove out this is by far his best season, especially in his two years in Texas. Now 10 on the shot clock. Chance to make it a three possession ball game with a bucket. Two to shoot. Carr does over Godwin. No, and Oklahoma's got it and still has a chance. Coming up on one minute to go in overtime. Godwin. Yes! 
How about Sam Godwin? Hunter runs the baseline, gets it in. And they get it back and will set it up. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 45 seconds to go in overtime. Now 10 to shoot. DeSue, two feet in the paint. And an offensive foul call on Dylan DeSue. That's his fifth. I mean, it, a, it's a great defensive play to come over and be there, and I like the call. He's got two feet facing the offensive player. He's in legal guarding position, and it's hard to see exactly how much contact there was, but from that angle, I think that's a good call. Yeah, or where Grant Sherfield's feet were. I mean, does he have room to catch? That's where this angle gives you a different, you know, gives you a different view. But it's a nice job by Dill or, uh, Grant Sherfield coming over to be there on the catch. Grant Sherfield with 18 points, four three pointers in the second half. And maybe that the biggest play of the game from number 25. Three point game. And you don't need three if you can get this thing going to the basket. Yuzan tries that. Kicks it out. Good hands. Christian Bishop out of, out of bounds. 15 on the shot clock. Four second differential between shot clock and game clock. It'll be Oklahoma basketball. Porter Moser, an excellent tactician. Let's see what he has dialed up. It's a tough place to inbound the basketball that deep on the sideline. Sooners with eight to shoot. Shurfield doubled. Here's Yuzan. All alone off the window. One point game. I like it. I, I, I like it. There is still plenty of time. And you now put the pressure back on Texas to have to make free throws here. Now, the thing for Oklahoma, they've got no timeouts. And so Porter Moser getting with Grant Sherfield as Sherfield makes his way down the court. But I like the drive here. Christian Bishop in a tough spot because you don't want to leave the drop off or an offensive rebounding opportunity. Big play by the freshman. And now Tyrese Hunter, a 78% free throw shooter, will step to the line for the first time this afternoon. And he's short. Texas still with two timeouts remaining. Good on that one. Two point game. Oklahoma could send it to double OT with a bucket or win it with a three. Here's Hill. Three seconds. One second left. Godwin. No. Texas survives.